Hello everyone and welcome back to another NRG. And this time, <coughs> when I cleared my throat, <coughs> we go back to the Super Nintendo with an all-time classic. Yeah, Super Castlevania 4 by Konami, 1991. Unmistakable game. Unmistakable for many reasons. Many reasons. It's, it's a wonderful game. I love it. Um, it's got a lot of character feel about it, body and mood and well I'm making it sound like a shampoo actually but uh, no, it's a, it's a fantastic game absolutely awesome uh, one of the earliest games on the Super Nintendo but it's still really good, it still stands up today as a really top notch platformer put my name in I always do that, I always do that, every time I do this, but I press the wrong button no the bug and off we go as Simon Belmont into Castlevania, Transylvania, to get Dracula himself. Have to do it. Yes, so, Castlevania is a um, very long running series. Uh, probably one of the most longest running series to date. Um, massively popular. Started on the NES with the original Castlevania. And um, it's appeared on many platforms since uh, the original Nintendo's. Uh, PlayStation and so on and so forth but it, um, the crux of the game never really changes uh, format ideas do uh, sometimes it become a little bit of an RPG obviously in modern day it's 3D uh, not uh, a 2D side-scrolling platformer but uh, you're always after a Dark Lord of some shape or form normally Dracula and um, I think Super Castlevania 4 is it's a landmark for the a landmark for the series. It was, it, I think it was because not only did it um, return the franchise to its roots from uh, uh, Past Castlevania to Simon's Quest, which kind of went down a, a different style of route, a bit of an RPG route, more of a storytelling route, more non-linear gameplay. Uh, this is much more like the first game. Ow, bollocks. Damn it. This is much more like the first game. In fact, some would bill it as a remake of the first game. I mean, the story is the same. It is Simon after Dracula, which is what the first game was. So you could say it was a remake, uh, of it, or in essence. But there are many things that uh, elevate it above the original. Um, for instance, Simon's whip action. That, there you go. I said that on cue. Bang! Bones everywhere. Let's go up the stairs. Uh, Eight-way directional whip as opposed to just uh, four directional whip that you did in the NES version of that as well, which is awesome. Grab something and that is, you know, the effect is just superb. When people first saw that, um, it wasn't the kind of thing you'd see on a game system when this came out, and it was so cool to see something like that and the interaction with the background, the whip swinging action. And uh, there's elements of uh, flashy mode 7 later in the game. Oh, I missed him. Got him that time, though. Which are really impressive. One bit is almost like a complete... Well, it's, it's almost like a trip out. I mean, a total trip out. <laughs> no uh, health warnings. Ah, sod it. Damn, there you go. Love the downward whip. Really handy, that, in this game. The whip downwards. These two-headed snake things. They can appear everywhere. I hate them. So annoying. Um, so that elevates it above a lot of things, and of course, you you can flail the whip if you hold the button. Uh, the variance of enemies is improved. The scope of the game is just ginormous compared to the original, and uh, much more impressive uh, enemy bosses, backgrounds. I mean, lovely parallax scroll in there. Uh, the environments and the settings are just really good. Well done. There's something in the wall here. Ha ha! I knew there was. It's a heart. A heart. For those of you who don't know the hearts that you collect out of the candles, uh, they give you your special weapon, basically. The number of special weapons you can fire. Bang! Got him! And uh, I think a lot of people complain about the stairs, uh, much like they did in the first game, uh, that you can fall through them. Well, you see, there's a trick to that. You don't necessarily will fall through them. You've got to press uh, the D-pad and... Oh, nice some food there. Bang! Medusa head. Splat! You've got to press the um, 
deep and direct in a diagonal direction uh, to land on the stairs if you jump on the stairs. If you don't do that, you will fall through them. Uh, I think a lot of people miss that. And a lot of people also miss them. They're turning the rotating platforms. Jump on them and don't jump off straight away. And you've had it. Oh, sod it. He's moved. I didn't want him to move because then he does that and then... Oh, sh... No! <sighs> I want to catch him before he dropped. Okay. Mr. Skeletal Horseman. I've got me daggers. So every time you use a dagger, you use one of your hearts up at the at the top there, you see. And... Come on. Oh, he's messing around. There we go. Right. Bang, 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 bang. Back together. Whip in the air. Oh, no, I missed him. He's jumped at me. You've had it now, sunshine. Come here. Oh, you bastard. There you go. Some great sound effects. Um... <laughs> I mean, that sound effect there was just crazy. I love that. Always have the pose. It's one of the poses I always love to do at the end when you get the when you get the power orb. Have Simon in mid whip. Harsh. Ah, Something along those lines, anyway. Brilliant map. Excellent detail. I haven't got to the music yet, have I? The music is just epic in this game. Um, it's it's a soundtrack. It's one of the classic soundtracks on the Super Nintendo for me. I think for a lot of people as well. Really good. The, the Simon's theme at the beginning is just awesome, and it's got renditions of the of classical of the classic themes from the first game. I think from the second game as well. Uh, like in the um, uh, the, uh, the clock tower stage, which is an amazing stage, and uh, one of my favourite sort of uh, stages for any game. I think the clock tower stage, infuriating difficult. But so impressively done with the, with the rotating cogs and a lot of very carefully planning s swinging going on. Not that kind of swinging, though. There's no, there's no that kind of stuff going on in Transylvania. Thank you very much. This is not Twilight. This is classic proper evil vampires. <laughs> um, I, anyway, I digress. That music is uh, Bloody Tears. It's called yes, and like a techno version of it. And this is fantastic, awesome. Um, and uh, pinpoint jumping needed, uh, certainly. Uh, it's not a breeze game, this. I mean, the first couple of levels, you can get through them pretty easily. Um, once you're in the castle, things start to toughen up pretty much. Um, I think when I first played the game... Oh, shit, I, and that geezer always gets me. Every time without fail. Kill the old men, lovely. And another one, just for good measure. I think when I first got to the castle bit, and uh, I came across the boss character in the first stage there, which is, I think, the ballroom stage. Uh, I, the dancing spectres, uh, the, the ghosts, they are hard. I mean, initially, when you when you first beat them, have a fight with them, they're bloody hard, and it took me forever to get past them. Got the clock. I didn't really want the clock. The clock freezes things. Them frogs are annoying. Really annoying. Bosh! There we go. You can get some really nice set pieces out. Sort of. There we go. Frog dead. Bat getting up. Oh, you see them tricksy them bats. The further you get into the game, of course, you get more concentration of enemies. Thank you for the uh, plate of roast dinner in the wall there. Nice. Always handy to find a plate of roast dinner in a wall, and you you would eat it, wouldn't you? Yes, because it's, it's going to give you health. And it's just one section after another that just is adds to the variance of the game, the mood, ambience. Oh, I want a drumstick, chicken drumstick. Bernard Matthews, thank you very much. Didn't need it actually, I had to full health. Um, and there's some, like I said, with, with the mode 7 in certain places, there's some great little cheeky effects. Uh, when the mermen, the mermen part is really good because the, the way they spit the water is. <laughs> It's just, it just looks very good. It looks very realistic. And uh, you, you weren't much, were you, Medusa? Or some sort of slug version of Medusa? And to the waterfall part. The second stage is an odd one because it actually has the boss midway through the level. It doesn't have it at the end. And up until I think, yeah, I think, like I said, up until the, the castle, the boss is generally not too hard. Uh, and then you get some really tough bosses in the final stages of the game. The hardest boss is not actually Dracula himself. He is tough. 
Hardest boss for me is the Grim Reaper, which is the, the boss character just before you fight Dracula. He is as hard as bleeding, flipping hard nails or some sort of hard thing like that. Yeah. But it's a challenging game for the most. It's really, you know, the, the music is superb. The graphics are wonderful. It's certainly a classic, and it's a classic for me. I think a classic for many people. And uh, for an early game on the Super Nintendo, it's a must for any uh, SNES collector's uh, library, should I say? Wow! Off you go. Jumping down here. Right, we're going to jump down the jump down to the bottom of the waterfall, and I think I'll bid you farewell. So. It's uh, Super Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo, all-time classic. Thank you very much, and uh, I will see you on the next NRG. Cheers, and Novabug out.